Welcome back to Learning Docker. Now in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at Mongo clustering, deploying a replica set. In our previous tutorial, we actually created a Mongo instance, but it was a singular Mongo instance. And I want to expand on that a little bit further by creating a full cluster or a replica set, as you will. Now, I've seen a few tutorials on this, how to do it online, and I'm not going to say they're complicated or hard because they're not but they could be a lot more simplified and by that i mean they take probably a few too many steps than you need to and it they're not really utilizing mongo to its best potential I'm not trying to critique um the people who wrote these articles because they're usually uh, from the what from some of the ones i've read they're really good articles and they'll um take things into depth um so you can understand things a lot better but i just want to show you the pure power today of docker and how easy it is to get these things going so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up in the context of a single Docker host rather than a swarm. Now to get this running as a swarm, there isn't actually that much configuration. I'll run it through. I'll run you through what you need to change to get this working as a Docker swarm as I go along. So we're going to create a Docker cluster, which is going to have four nodes. We're going to have one primary and three workers. So for this to actually work, um, we're going to need a couple of volumes and we're also going to need a network. Now we're only going to need a single network because in a standard Docker cluster, if your primary goes down, all your workers or, or secondary nodes will vote then to decide who is going to be the new primary and that primary has to then be accessible as do all of the other Mongo nodes for a replica set or Mongo cluster to work effectively. Now, each of the nodes is going to require a data volume and uh, all the rest of the data I'm not really bothered about such as logs and so forth and it's also going to need a shared volume between all four of the nodes um, for the keys so this is allowing the uh, Mongo nodes to talk together in an encrypted uh, way. So let's start by creating our project shall we. So we have a blank um, folder here now let's start by I say blank folders so read me in there um, and I'll go into that in a little bit later. We're going to create a simple file, a uh, simple Docker Compose file to be with. So create a file called Docker Compose YAML. We're going to state that we're going to be using version uh, 3.0. Little side note: I've only actually tested this in version 2.0, so let's just hope this works. And let's first define our volumes. So the first volume we're going to use is toot. 12-mongo-keys, which is going to be our key store for all of our Mongo nodes. Then we're going to create some data volumes, so mongo12-mongo-data, and then we're going to count from 0 upwards. So 0, and then 3 additional volumes, and they're just going to be 1, 2, and 3, which are going to be our data volumes. The next thing we're going to need is a network. So let's define our network by simply stating networks. I'm going to call it toot. 12 dash replica set and within our network we're just going to use a simple driver which is going to be a bridge network now this is if i'm correct the only thing that you will actually need to change if you want to make this um, deployable as a mongo service well there's a few little caveats you might need to change obviously services um, you, you obviously can define this as a mongo service or a docker service and also then deploy maybe as a uh, maybe like a replica cluster or something like that um, but you know that's going to be tweaking here and there but either way you should be able to deploy this effectively if I'm right on a docker swarm by simply changing the network if I am wrong I will leave a comment in the description in the comments down below stating why I was wrong if you feel like I'm wrong feel free to leave a comment as well so what I'm going to do is obviously define this as a bridge network because we're going to be running this off a single host we're going to do some IP address management and then you're simply going to use driver uh, default for this and use the config for the subnet. I'm going to use 172.10.5.0 and we're going to use subnet mask of 24 or 256 um, IPs. So that's going to give us the IP range 172.10.5.0 to 172.10.5.255. Okay, now we have our network and our volumes defined, let's start defining our services. Now, the first thing you probably noticed is that we have this Mongo keys. Now, what's the point of that? What can we do with this Mongo keys volume um, that will allow us to create a key across all of our nodes? Well, we're actually going to use a Docker container to generate our key. And this uh, this will generate a new key every time you spin up the Mongo cluster, which is great, actually, if you want to um, cycle your keys or, or, or 
you basically just uh, rotate your keys quite frequently obviously you would need to turn this um, uh, the stock container on and off and then cycle through your other containers on and off um, to, for this to work it probably would cause some problems if you're doing this in a production environment so I I'd be debatable whether this is the best solution. Either way, for this setup, I'm going to use it. So we're going to create a service called toot12-mongo-keys. Um, this is just going to use a predefined image, which is dpop open ssl-bats. Now, this was the only um, image I could find which actually had everything I needed it to. So I'm just going to reuse that. We're going to create. Uh, we're going to assign the volume um, dash toot. 12 mongo keys and we're going to assign that to the directory mongo dash conf okay and to generate our keys we're just simply going to pass in a command which is going to be uh, bash dash c for execute command in bash open ssl rand um, can generate base 64 key um, and 741 random numbers if i'm correct into the file mongo mongo dash conf forward slash mongo db key file okay so now we've actually generated our key file we need to do two things to it one we need to make sure that it's read and write only permit oh, i think it's read and execute permissions only for the owner so we do that with ch mod um, 600 and I'm just going to simply copy and paste that file into there and then we're going to need to actually change the ownership of this so chown now if you wanted a generic way like you probably people are used to doing chown and then the username so you'd think in like root root that might cause some problems here so we can just simply state chown 999 which if I'm correct will assign it to root in the file name and that is simply all we need to do to generate our key file and this key file should then be useful by all of our nodes um, once you mount the volume so let's start mounting or creating our nodes so the first thing we can do is create a primary i'm going to call it toot da sorry toot 12 dash mongo primary now within that so we're going to create an image it's going to be mongo uh, latest now if this doesn't work i believe i'm running mongo six 3.6.0 so if you want to try or actually am i maybe possibly even four um when i spin up the cluster um check which version of mongo i'm using or i'll try and remember to tell you which one i'm using at that point i think it's 3.6.0 or i could be getting this confused with document db um aws's recent uh, uh, implementation of mongo i'll check once the actual containers up and run so let's also mount the volumes so the first volume we're going to need to mount is toot 12 mongo keys and we're going to mount this to the directory opt key file and then we are going to mount the volume toot 12 mongo data dash zero which is going to be mounted to data db okay so that's mounted okay we're now going to also assign an environment uh, an environment by, uh, file to this. So we're going to just ins um, assign the, var the file mongod.m. So let's start by creating this file. And we're just going to have two values. So um, I, Mongo will allow us to instantiate an instance with a certain amount of um, uh, variables. And I believe it's quite limited. And two of those are mongo init db root username and for this one i will just simply use the username of root and i'm going to use mongo init db root password yes you guessed it and i'm going to be lazy and call it password for the love of god if you use this as a production environment change these values okay so that will allow us to create a an instance with those two username and password values already set now, the next thing we need to do from there is do a bit of port mapping. So, uh, I'm actually going to map for the primary 27017 to 27017. Just a key uh, note here do not map any of the instances to 27017 on your local Docker host, otherwise, you're going to have port conflicts. And then we're going to launch Mongo with a command. We're going to launch it with the command mongod small files auth and then we're going to do a key file 
Uh, so basically we're saying we don't use small files, we want to make sure it's authenticated and we're going to use the key file opt key file mongodb dash key file. And then we're going to use a, we're going to say we're going to be part of a replica set, which is just going to be toot 12 dash replica set. And this Mongo ints or this Mongo node or Docker node, should I say, is going to be dependent or depends on the key file. So we're going to need to state that we depend on toot 12 dash Mongo keys. And then finally, we're going to be part of the network toot 12 replica set. Okay, so that's everything you you need to set up. Now, essentially, the worker nodes are very similar to this with a few minor modifications. So let's just copy and paste this rather than me typing it out all over again. Let's just call this uh, doo -doo -doo, worker one. Change that to worker dash one. We've got the data file of one. We still want the same key file. We want to change the port to um, one off from that. And then that is basically it. You don't actually need to change much more. So we can now copy and paste this another two more times, change a couple of values, one, two. This is gonna be three, three, and this is gonna be up two. So this is gonna be 20. Let's pinch it three. And this is gonna be 19. Two, two, and two. Okay, so that is basically all we need to do to define our Docker environment. So if I am correct, so fingers crossed, if I do Docker compose up, this should actually build our network, build our volumes, attach our volumes to our services, and then deploy all of our services. First things first, it should actually generate our key and then spin up all of our Docker nodes. As you can see here, it looks like it may have worked, which is actually quite amazing because this is the first time I've actually tried to record this tutorial where I've not completely screwed it up. Now it's actually running. If I interact with this terminal, I'll break something. So I'm just going to open a new terminal. Go away. Uh, go back to, to tutorial 12. Now, um, rather than try and do anything fancy, what I'm going to do is run um, through a a load of commands that I've already predefined. So obviously I've run the Docker Compose up. Let's try, oh, I really need to rename these. Connect to the primary node. So I can connect to the primary node using Docker Compose exec 212 mongo primary, and then I want to connect, e uh, basically I want to connect to the mongo client um, using the username root and the password of password. So hopefully that'll work. Fingers crossed. It did. Fantastic. Also to uh, point out that I am actually using Mongo version 4.0.5. I did get confused with the document DB instance. Okay, so let's first make this a Mongo cluster or Mongo replica set. We can do that by simply stating rs.initiate and then we want to state that the ID is toot12 replica set and then we do want to define all the members of the replica set. So ID 0. Um, it's going to be host mongo 12 dash mongo dash primary to set uh, and put run on port 27017. The next one, worker one, same port. Remember, this is ports run over the same network, so they can be the same. This isn't the external facing networks you need to access on your local machine. And then, obviously, host uh, two, shall we say, is going to be uh, mongo worker two, 27017 again, and Host three is going to be running two twelve mongo worker three two seven zero one seven. Now, if I run this command, it will create the um, mongo cluster or give me an error message. Okay, so Chrome check failed because not all proposed set members responded affirmatively. Tutorial one failed with error connecting to twelve mongo worker caused by could not find address two twelve mongo worker dash one. Okie dokie, so what have I done wrong? Mongo, ah, I've called it Mongo work, not Mongo worker. So let me just readjust that to work. I will correct this in the tutorial so they will actually be using Mongo worker. So if I copy and paste that, okay. So the first thing you'll notice that I've had an okay message and it's now stated, let's see, I don't know how well you can see that. Actually, I probably should have zoomed this in 
previously. Um, I've had a message saying OK one, and it's now telling me that I'm on a replica set of it and I'm using a secondary. Now the reason for that is that I'm pretty sure that all of the nodes at this point are secondaries. So rs.status, uh, this probably won't tell me, oh no, it's already voted me or elected me as the um, primary. But what I was going to do is just show you through each of the nodes and obviously you see secondary, secondary, uh, node 2, secondary. But at some point I got elected as the primary node. Now I want to make it firm that node 1 is the primary node. And I can do this by simply stating conf equals rs.config. So this basically just gives me the config of the Mongo cluster. And I'm just going to basically state that um, the, the first node, in this case the first member, which is going to be member 0, is going to have the priority of 2. Now with Mongo priority, the higher number the um, basically means the higher likelihood it's going to be elected as the primary node. So, because I've defined that as um, config var or I've defined that as a local variable called config, I can now manipulate that by doing conf dot members. I want to get the first member, which is going to be the primary um, instance anyway. Dot priority is equal to two. Okay, and I'm just going to reconfigure the cluster, so or reconfigure the replica set. So that's what the RS stands for, replica set. Um, reconfigure and apply that to apply my comp to it. Okay, so let's learn by spelling reconfigure right. I'll start. I'm missing something here, aren't I? Re have I gone blind? Reconfigure is not a function. It should be. Okay. Let's just type that. Let's just drop the connection again and reconnect. This just seems like it's doing something quite weird. Okay. RS dot. Oh. It's not reconfigure, it's your config. Re Let's just try getting these commands right. Okie dokie. So now I have set my primary, um, or what I've dubbed my primary node as the primary node, essentially. I've set it at the highest priority. So if there is ever a vote or any connectivity issues between any of the nodes, and then they reconnect, and then they have a, they basically have an election to see who is now the primary node one or the primary node should always win because it has the highest priority. And that's essentially how it works. If you wanted to set priority, say, five for the first node and priority three for the second node and one for all the other nodes, that would then obviously um, elect the node one first or the primary node first and then a, a sort of elect worker one once um, if primary isn't available, should we say. Okay, so now we've proved that works. Let's just do some basic things. So I'm going to create a, cl a cluster manager. So I'm going to just use admin uh, or use the database admin. Um, let's just show DBs. Is it show DB? No, it's show, not shows. So I've got three databases by default. I've got admin, config, and local. If I want to create a new database, I need to obviously use that database and create a collection for it. But I'm not. I just simply want to create a cluster admin. Um, again, I'm creating it with the password of password. Um, I'm just creating a couple of roles for it. I'm going to create the user admin, any database, and also a cluster admin, which allows me not to have to use the root credentials when I'm doing any cluster management. So let's assign that. And then let's just validate that that user works by just simply doing db.all. And then the username and password I have just created. And it should return a one. It should return a zero and failed authentication message if it doesn't work. So now I want to actually just create a um, a user, essentially, and a, a basically a new database and a collection to go with it. So I can do that by just simply saying use uh, my underscore data. So I'm now using the uh, database my underscore data. You won't actually be able to see this if I do show uh, DBS because that still has not had no collections or no data inserted into it yet. So therefore, it's not dubbed an actual database at that point until that point shall I say. So I'm going to create user first 
and I've now just basically created a very simple user called my user and is password against password. Again, if you're doing this in production environment, for the love of God, change the password. And to be honest, I really wouldn't use my underscore user either. And I'm just creating the role of read write, uh, which should allow me to read and write, um, do all the general modification of collections and so forth. Um, and hopefully I should I'll be also able to create a, I think I'm still authorized as the, um, I think I'm still authorized as the, um, the, the, or the cluster admin. So if I just do auth um, root and then password, let's get myself back as root. Authentication failed. Uh, easy way to do this. Exit. Connect again. Okay. So hopefully this time, if I do use my underscore data, and then if I create the collection, it should this time work because I'm creating it as root. It has fantastic. So if I now disconnect, hopefully. I should be able to now do a Docker Compose exe 12 Mongo primary with the username, my user, my password, and authenticate against the uh, the database, my data. So hopefully it should allow me to connect. It has. And I should be able to do show dbs, which should also now show my underscore data. And I should now be able to do um, use my uh, underscore data and then show collections which should show my collection of my collection. So that means our cluster is now working. So fantastic, we now have a working Mongo cluster in Docker, running on a single Docker host, and that is gonna be basically it for our tutorial today. I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Um, all the source code and so forth will be available um, on the GitHub, I will link a link. I will sorry, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. If you are interested in any of these videos I'm producing, um, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you'll be notified when I release my latest video. Um, if you have any feedback, comments, or so forth or questions, again, comment box down below. Um, but that is going to be it for today. Now, I hope you found this useful, and I hope you found it well interesting as well and helped you with your day-to-day -day life, especially with Docker. So happy Dockering and I'll catch you around next time.